permanent knots that were really usher. Those were knots that were tied onto the camel and the knot that was tied onto the boat. This Mishnah says that there are certain knots that you're not chayev like that. What happens then? It's pater of You're not allowed to do it, but you're not chayev. Okay, now the Gemara is going to ask on the continuation of the Mishnah. So we could either learn it with the, in the way that the Gemara is going to ask a question on it, or we can learn it with the final answer. The final answer is going to be that we're not listing what those knots are in the Mishnah. Uh, There's missing, it's, the, the, the Mishnah is just telling us, there are certain knots that are pater avalasar. Okay, now put a period. New story. Kisheres isha miftah haluka. Miftah haluka. A person is allowed to tie the straps that are on her robe. A woman. Uh, the, ro- the robe would have straps up on the top. And one would go here and one would go there and they would tie it. In other words, the right uh, collar could be, would be tied up onto the left and the left one would be tied up onto the right. Or the tie of a hair net, probably some sort of tichel. Or a type of belt. Or the straps of a shoe or of a sandal. Shoelaces. Um, it was made a little different than shoelaces. Our shoelaces, basically, you have an entire shoe, and the lace is just tighten it up. Over, over there, the, the, the shoe itself was the laces. There was more laces in those shoes. It was, you were tying actually the whole shoe with like- Like, so like the Roman sandal. Like the Roman sandals, yeah. But whatever the case is, uh, that's, uh, it's gonna come up a little bit in if there's a strap on the outside, a strap on the inside, and different types of, okay. You're allowed to open those and, and tie those on Shabbos. Anything that you're allowed to tie, you're allowed to open it. You're allowed to open, you're allowed to tie. Noidis yayin, shemen, jugs of oil and wine. Yes, you're allowed to open on Shabbos and tie. Kadera shel basar. There used to be pots that you could would tie it up on top, you'd put a cloth over it and tie it tight. Uh, you're allowed to do that as well. Rebeles, the Gemara is going to ask in all those cases. Obviously, it's not a Kesha Shel Kayama. I mean, if you're going to use the pot, you can't tie it. Like, like the Gemara before said that we're talking about the strap, um, not that gets tied onto the nose ring of the camel. It's, uh, it, it, we're talking, it's the nose ring itself that, that was the permanent one. Now we're talking about things that you use, it, that you mamish open every day. This is um, just a little rope that they put across an opening and the animal knows not to go out. It's like the ropes that they have like in the airport or in the banks, you know, that they tell you where to stand in line. It's not there to contain anyone. It's just, uh, <laughs> just a mark and it gets open to let the, okay. When I saw Gufakasha, the mission itself is contradictory. Self contradictory. Amrit, the mission says, There are certain types of knots that you're not chayav, like you would be chayav if you tied the camel knot or if you tied the sailor's knot. That means that those are really chayav, and this one is not so chayav. That means that you're not chayav. But it means that you're still forbidden. You're not chayev the way you chayev on a on a camel's uh, camel's knot or on a sailor's knot, but you still it's still aser. But then the Mishnah continues and doesn't tell me a case of aser. The Mishnah says, "Kishar says, you're allowed to." Okay, now we're going to ask the Gemara. At least the diak of the Mishnah is, is contradictive. 
The Gemara answers Hachi Kamer. No, it means the following. There are certain knots that you're not chayev for tying them on Shabbos the way you would be chayev if you tied those other knots, those camel knots and the sailor's knots. Mind you, what are these knots that you're not chayev? But it's still us, sir. Kitcher de kachi bis mama, the kitcher de kachi bis trida. We said yesterday that you put a ring inside the nose of the camel, and then onto that ring you tie a rope, and on that rope that rope gets tied. One end is tied to the ring, and the other end gets tied to a post or something. Now, when you undo it, you always have the option of undoing the one that's on the nose. You have the option of undoing the one that's on the, on the post. So it's not a Keshe Shel Kayama because it's made to get undone. But it's also not one that always gets open because I only need to open one of these and the other one can, let, can, let, can, can leave hanging. So that type of knot is, is Pater Avalasa. So Kitcha, a knot, Kitcha is a Keshe, um, a Tess and a Shin. Uh, could also be interchanged, just like uh, we said, a tough many times. Kitcha is is a, is a knot. Sometimes it means smoke. Um, his mama is on the ring and that goes into the nose. The kitcha the kacha bestrida, or the knot that goes onto the the piece that goes onto the sailors, uh, onto the onto the boat. Over there, chiyuvad leka yisurika. Then the Mishnah goes on and says, but then there are others that are totally mutter, that you're really allowed to do, even that she's allowed to open the uh, straps on her robe. No, that's a tied strap. Okay. So we explain that the Mishnah really has, um, there's, there's, there's really three types of knots. Chayev, Pater and Mater. Okay, Mafteh Chaluka, she's allowed to open up the, the knots on her robe. Pshita, obviously. That can't be a Kesha Shalkayama. She has to get dressed every day. It can't be a permanent knot. How does she get out of it? Right? So, Leitricha de Isle Tre Dashi. Okay, this is interesting. See, sometimes uh, Bachrim. Um, uh, go to the mikveh, they take off the shirts. You don't unbutton the whole shirt. They they unbutton like three, four buttons, and then they take it off like as if it's a like an undershirt. They just pull it off like that. So what happens then is it, it just gets loosened, but it's still tied. It's still one strap is still tied. So you have a problem because we're talking about a chalukah that has two straps. You don't have to undo both of them. You only have to undo one and you can get it off. So one of them is going to be a Kesha Shel Kayama. And the other one is going to be the one that you open. As the Gemara says, they see that now we have an issue here. Because if there's two straps, you don't have to open both. It says, One of them is going to be a bottle. That means it's going to be permanent. Because you're going to leave it there and you're never going to open it up. Mashmala, and it comes to teach us that no, they do open it up. Doesn't explain why, but it says no, Kamashmala, and that they open it up. The Gemara asks again, a similar question with a similar answer. The Chutei Svacha and the Hirnet, Pshita, that's obvious. If she puts on her uh, Tichel, she has to take it off, she can't, doesn't wear it uh, forever. Okay, we're talking about that it was loose. A well, loose tichel, you never have to retie. You just slip it on. I could say that maybe she slips it on, she slips it off. Kamash Milan comes to teach us to Isha Chasal Saira Mishra Shaila. No, a woman doesn't want to push it on and push it off because it could pull out hairs. And a woman is more careful with her. So she's going to untie it and then tie it again. Okay. Some discussion which way there's a concern, putting it on or putting it off. Anyway, Ritsuas 
uh, uh, Rashi points out over here that you didn't, we didn't mention the belt. There was another case in the Mishnah. We are, um, we mentioned, we said that you're allowed to tie the belt. And the Gemara could have asked on that pshita, of course, but how is it supposed to, is it going to just leave it permanently on? And the Gemara, Rashi says, Rashi makes like a, uh, like a, um, a fake Gemara. It says, well, the Gemara could have answered that, um, could have said that maybe you don't have to untie the belt. You could just slip it off and step out of it. Um, but Kamash Malan, that, that's not how they do it. That wouldn't be Tzniyasti. Okay. Now, let's see. Ritsuas Minol Vesandal. The straps of a shoe and a sandal. Itmar, we have a statement of Amirayim. Hit Ritsuas Minol Vesandal. It was taught. That's interesting. Starts with the Itmar. And it goes, tells us it's a Brisa. It's a little strange. Itmar is always a Memra. It's always, uh, it's very interesting. Okay, if someone opens the straps, on his, that's good, we have an exception to the rule. Except in Masech Tashama Stav Kofi Beis. It says Itmar and it's quoting Tanayim. Okay, so um, if someone opens the straps of a shoe or a sandal. Tani Chad Chayav Chatas. One Brysa says that you Chayav Chatas if you open your shoelaces. Tani Idach Pater. Another Brysa says Pater. Ab Pater Arbalas. You're exempt. You don't have to bring a, a sacrifice, but still forbidden. Another Brahsa says that it's mutter. You're allowed to do this. So the Gemara says, Kasha mina minal, kasha sandal as sandal. There's a problem with uh, the Brahsas that are discussing the shoes, and it's a problem with the sandals. Gemara answers like this. Minal a minal like kasha. On the shoes, there's no question. Why? Hadiktani chayev chatas. This that we said, yichayev chatas, if you undo the knots, that's the ush kafi. He's talking about the knots, that tie the straps to the sole. Those are the knots that the shoemakers make. You know, the shoe itself is, is made with leather, and that leather is tied together. Now, that is the shoemaker's knot. That you don't untie. Pater avalaser bidirabonan. When you say that it's pater avalaser, that's talking about knots that are made on the laces, but it's the way the rabbanan would wear their shoes. Mutla chatchila is the way that it was done in Mechuzah. Let me just explain this. People in Mechuzah dressed very sharp. Their clothing fits well. They tied it tight. They were, uh, this was the style, uh, you know. So they tied the shoes tight. You couldn't slip it off. You had to untie it every day. That's mutla chatchila. The Rabbanan didn't have the same sort of uh, standard in, uh, in style, and they would tie the shoes loosely, and you could slip it off and, and put it on. They claimed the Chafetz Chaim uh, didn't. They claimed this. I don't know. Didn't wear shoes that had laces. He said he made a cheshbon that the tying your shoes would equal to about two weeks of time over a lifetime, and that was a waste of time. He needed to learn, and you want to waste that amount of time. Would save. Uh, I heard the Vishnitz Chassid uh, said his father he was coming here collecting. He says this when the, they invented the blender. So, um, so uh, his father was so impressed with this blender. He says, it used to be you would eat a salad and you would eat some fish, you would eat some soup. He said, now with the blender, you just put the whole thing in and you just drink it. And mama, she go back to learning. <laughs> It saves time. So the Rabbanan didn't uh, didn't um, tie the shoes tightly. They would slip it on and off. So that is pater avalaser if you untie it, because that those knots could be tied for more than a day. It's a loose a loose knot. You don't have to untie it. Okay, now let's go to the sandal. That was the shoe. Sandal a sandal like kasha. When it comes to the sandals, hadik tani chayv chatas. This is what we say, it's chayev chatas, b'detayi de kitri ushkepi. 
It's talking about the Tayyan. Tayyan is uh, it's like the Arab. Uh, they, they, walking in the desert, that gets tied by the shoemakers. They have a permanent knot in those sandals. Pater Avalasar is Bidhumarta. That's a sort of a self made um, strap. It's not tied as tight. The Katri Inu. That they tie. Not the, uh, excuse me, not the uh, shoemakers. And um, when is it It's a type of shoe that two people are, are using. I was always told them not to share shoes or something. Anyway, that uh, apparently is more modern than the Gemara's time. The Gemara, people would share shoes or sandals. And Rav Yehuda Achva, Rav Salah Chassid, Havaleyahu Zuga de Sandalei. He had Rav Yehuda, the brother of Rav Achva, uh, the brother of Rav Salah Chassid, he had a pair of shoes. Sim did nafak be'yuz, nafak be'yunuke. Sometimes he would wear it, sometimes his child would wear it. It means that you, you would always untie it when you put it on. This is Rav Yehuda, the brother of Salah um, We had, we had a, I, no, I don't know if we had this Gemara, but there was a Gemara where Rav Yehuda, Rav Eloi, shared a shirt with his wife. They only had one shirt. They were very poor. There he's sharing shoes with, with his son. Okay, Asal Kami Dabaya. Comes to Abaya, I'm like, I gave them my. What about these shoes? Am I allowed to tie them, untie them on Shabbos? I'm like, Abaya says, Chiv Chatas. We're talking about he's sharing them with his, with his uh, child. He says, if you open these, you Chiv Chatas. I'm like, Hash the Pater of Alasa Kakashali, Chiv Chatas currently. I wasn't asking if I'm Chiv Chatas. I was asking if I'm allowed to do it. I didn't, I didn't know, maybe it's Pater of Alasar, but he gave me an answer that's so like uh, much more than I ever thought. So my time is, why didn't you think that you should be Chiyav Chatas? This is, you're tying the shoes, this is going to be tied tight. Um, says, so because even in the weekdays, sometimes I wear it, sometimes the child wears it. So he responds, yeah, you're right. I didn't, you didn't tell me that, that, uh, that detail. That's an important detail. If you're sharing the shoes with someone else, then, then that's, uh, that's going to be for sure, mother, because you have to tie it every time you put it on to change the, the, the size. Rabbi Yirmiya Havikozel Basre de Rav Havo Bekarmelis. Rabbi Yirmiya is walking after Rav Havo in the, in the Karmelis. Carmelis is in the area that's not a Rosh Hashanah, um, and it's also not a Rosh Hashanah. It's not like a Chatzar where it's surrounded by a wall. It's rabbinically uh, prohibited to carry there. Ifsik lay ritzua the sandali. The strap of Rabbi Yirmiya's shoe breaks. Amalei, my navidla. Rabbi Yirmiya says to Rabbi Vo, what could I do? Amalei, shkolg milach, the chazal ma'chol be'ima, kreichel levei. Take a soft reed. Um, you see, we're looking for a reed that's not mukta. So what he's going to do is he's going to tie it up. So it'd be like saying, take a piece of spaghetti. Uh, that's a little too loose. <laughs> so I don't know, take uh, something over there that um, some some vegetables that are more stringy, you know, celery or something. Um, Take a piece and uh, that's not mukta and wrap it up, tie, tie it so it should hold. Okay. He gave him a, a solution of how to get the shoe out of the Carmelis because he didn't want to leave it there. So he tells him, well, do some temporary fix. And uh, Abaya, Havikoy Kamidir of Yosef. Abaya is in front of Rav Yosef and he has the same story. If the clay his his strap breaks. Amle Mayavadla. He says, what can I do? Amalei Shavke. Rabbi Yisif says, uh, you're just going to have to abandon it. You know, just leave it. So Abayah says, Ma'ishnamid Rabbi Yirmiya. 
wow, what's the difference? My story, then Rabbi Yirmi, he also had a shoe, he, and, and uh, Rabbi Vo told him he's, he can strap it up with some sort of edible uh, reed. It's edible for animals. So Rabbi Yisuf responds, Hasam leminta achaminta. This is very interesting. Over there, it was in a Carmelis. Someone could steal it. Over here, no one's taking it. It's in the Chatzah. So just leave it. It comes out that there's a heter to, for what exactly the heter is to do what. But if there's a, if there's a loss, a concern of a loss, then there's a heter to, to, to strap this up. The Gemara says, one second. <clears throat> why do you tell him to leave it? If it's in a chatzar, why does he have to just leave it there? Because there's, there's a discussion about a button that falls off. Sometimes, uh, let's say, a kapata or something. So kapata buttons, you have to call uh, and, uh, <laughs> some farm store in New York. And it's not like you can just get it. And, uh, you know. So um, anyway, uh, falls on the floor. It's a problem. There's a machlekas if, if you can take the button and put it in your you know, talus bag or something. Or if you just have to leave it, maybe it became muktzah if it fell off. So here the problem is that he has a shoe that's broken. And Rabbi Yosef tells him, like, it's muktzah. You, you just leave it there. Why is it muktzah? It's still a shoe. Manu means a vessel. It's still a keli. And the dibina hafichna le mi le small, because he can put it on the other side. Now, I'm not sure exactly what it means. Whatever the case is, they didn't want to wear. Um, if the, uh, there was, let's say, there's a the strap on the outside of the shoe, outside the foot. That if that was broken, that was a problem. But the strap on the inside wasn't as visible, and that was okay. So if they're too strapped, so what he could do is, if he puts it on the other foot, then what used to be the outside is now the inside. So that, there's a way of wearing the shoe. Maybe it means, uh, another, it could be that it meant he would turn it around, wear it on the other side, turn it around, then um, the back was still whole, was still good. It was the front that was the issue. And maybe he could be able to hold it with his toes on the, from the back, which was the strap there was still tight. Whatever the case is, it, it's still usable. A Malay, Sir Rabbi Yosef responds, Abai is like protecting this, uh, uh, the shoe, like, why are you telling me? And it's still a keli. Rabbi Yosef responds, no. Mita kamataretz Rabbi Yechanan alibad Rabbi Yehuda, shmamila halachak Rabbi Yehuda. There's a discussion about using a shoe from one foot on the other foot, and it's a machlaikas. Uh, Rabbi Yehuda holds that you can't. Now, the fact that Rabbi Yechanan, in that machlaikas, makes a whole discussion, and according to which opinion is he, is he going according to in that discussion? Ah, he's going according to Rabbi Yehuda. It must be, if he's putting an emphasis on explaining Rabbi Yehuda, it must be the Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda. And what does Rabbi Yehuda hold? that switching a shoe from the right to the left is not considered a vessel. If it's a right shoe and it doesn't work as a right shoe, you have to use it on the left. It's not considered a keli anymore. Mayhi, what's that discussion? We have to go through this discussion. It's going to take us a little bit because we go through and then we say, does Rabbi Yechen really say that Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda? We'll go through this whole thing. First, you have to discuss the original machlekes. Then we say what Rabbi Yechen's statement is. And then we claim that that's the halacha, and then we're going to contest that that's the halacha, that's even the halacha. Okay, so this begins like this. Titania, sandal shenifsku shte yoznav. Apparently, there was, towards the back of the foot, there's two, like, handles on the shoe that you could use to, to pull it up or something. If that broke. Ishte tarsi yosav. Or the two holders that the strap goes through. It's like a ring for the strap or something, if that broke. Basically, it's not usable anymore. Or the whole sole came off. It's tar. The shoe is tar. Uh, tar means that it's not a vessel anymore. And if it was tame, just like a broken vessel, is not, it becomes tar. 
if this is a broken vessel, it becomes tar. There's, the, there's no tam on it. What happens if achas miyosna v'yachas mitar siyosav? Only one of those uh, those um, handles for the shoe, one of the rings, a shnitul reiva kafshalai, or if most of the the sole came off, but it's still attached, that's tummy. Sometimes the shoes get so worn out that the, the thing flaps. You know, the, it's, it's time to get new shoes. So. Yeah, what was the family that lived in a the shoe? There was like some rhyme, they lived in a shoe. Anyway, um, if if it's mostly off, it's tummy. It's tummy. It's still considered a, a vessel. Now here's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda, I'mer nifsuka panimias is tummy. Nachitzen is tar. Depends if it's the inside or the outside. The the inside strap, it's still usable one that's in between the, the feet, and one that's on the outside that's more visible, that, because that's tar. If that broke, if that broke, it's tar. Now, Rabbi Huda does not accept that you can just put it on the other foot. That means that it becomes tar if the outside strap breaks. You know, technically, you could put it on the other foot, but Rabbi Huda doesn't accept that. Okay, so we see what Rabbi Huda's opinion is about a shoe that the outside strap breaks that could be exchanged for the other side. He doesn't accept it. The Amar Ula, who says that this is the halacha, Ula said on this, said, Some say that Rabbi Baravua said it in the name of Rabbi Yechanan. Let's see. Um, same machlekes that they have regarding if the shoe becomes tar, that machlekes they have regarding the laws of Shabbos, if you're allowed to, if you're allowed to move it. Of a loyalin in chalitza. Regarding chalitza, everyone agrees something. We don't know what. We don't know which way this goes. But there's a mach- if there's a machlekes regarding tuma, that same machlekes regarding regarding Shabbos, and then by chalitza they agree. Now v'havinimba, we deliberated on this. <coughs> Rabbi Yechanan Ali Bedeman. <clears throat> Who does Rabbi Yechanan say that statement when he says that regarding Chalitza they agree? You see, the problem is they agree to who? To which side? Depends who he's talking about. Everyone agrees that it is a good shoe for Chalitza. You know, when they do, um, uh, if a woman, her husband passes away, so the brother, if they don't have children, the brother marries that, that woman. Now, if the if the, he doesn't want to, so they do they do chalitza. He puts on a shoe, she pulls it off. So um, that that shoe needs to be uh, an acceptable shoe. Is that shoe okay? Now, what we're discussing here is that this shoe has a problem with it. You can only wear it on the wrong foot. <laughs> Doesn't fit on the foot. It doesn't can't be tied to the to the to one of the, the to the to the foot that this shoe was made for. So now we're saying that somehow they've got both going to agree that it's either it is acceptable, or it's not acceptable. But let's see. Ilay Mali with the Rabbanon. If he's talking about the Rabbanon's opinion now, the Rabbanon said that if there's one strap remaining, it's still acceptable. Only if both straps broke, is it tar? So it goes like this. If one strap is there, it's still considered a vessel. Uh, so it's also a vessel for Shabbos and you can move it. If it falls off, a buyer would have been able, according to the Rabbanon, to move his shoe somewhere. But that would mean that regarding Chalitza, it's not a vessel. Because he's saying that this opinion doesn't argue regarding chalitza. The problem with that is, is that we have another Mishnah that says, Vatanan, chalitza shall small be in chalitza It's a big problem. It says that regarding chalitza, if you put the shoe on the wrong foot, or you put the left shoe on the right foot, then the chalitza was kosher. 
So why are you saying that there's an issue here? That uh, with this chalitza shoe, this technically could go on the other foot and it would be, uh, it should be kosher. So why is Rabbi Yechanan saying that there's no machlekes, that it's no good? Now, if Rabbi Yechanan is not talking about the opinion of the Rabbanan that are more accepting of shoes, but he's going with the other opinion, then when he says, but there's no machlekes regarding chalitza, that would mean that it is kosher. So that, if, if Rabbi Yechanan was referring to Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, then, then you're, there's a way out. It goes like this. Bella, leave it to Rabbi Yehuda. Maybe Rabbi Yechon was referring to Rabbi Yehuda. Midlin in Tumalav Manahu, and now we say it exactly the opposite. Rabbi Yehuda holds that one strap broken on a shoe is not an acceptable shoe. Therefore, it becomes Tahar. Now, since regarding Tuma, it's not a shoe. So, Linian Shabbos Namilav Manahu. So, regarding Mukta, it's also not a shoe. It's also not a vessel. That means that you, uh, that you can't move it on Shabbos. Abayab's shoe broke, you're stuck with it. You just leave it there. But this wouldn't apply to chalitza. For chalitza, it would be good. The manuhu. So that means that it should fit well. The Gemara asks on this. We thought we just resolved it. The Gemara says, you thought you resolved it. No, you're just, you're messing it up. Because when would I say that if I put a shoe a left shoe on the right foot, and the chalitza is performed with the wrong shoe on the wrong on the, on the right foot, the wrong shoe on the right foot. So then I say that that's considered a real chalitza. That's because that shoe was actually a shoe. But over here, where this shoe is not a shoe, I'll prove it to you. It's not a shoe, because if it was tame, it becomes tar now that it's broken. If it's shabbos, it becomes muktzah. So it's clearly not a shoe. Rabbi Yehuda, or the, the Mishnah never said that something that's not a shoe could, could be used. And here, according to this, if Rabbi Yechanan is referring to Rabbi Yehuda, it would come out that you can use something that's not even a shoe for chalitza. You see clearly, Rabbi Yehuda holds it's not a shoe. It's impossible to say that there's no argument. Rabbi Yehuda would agree that it's good for chalitza. Where he answers, Layla Maliba de Rabbi Yehuda. You're right, we're stuck. You can't say it's referring to Rabbanan. You can't say it's referring to Rabbi Yehuda. So we're going to gonna have to amend the statement. We're going to have to adjust the wording here. Really, is referring to Rabbi Yehuda. And he doesn't say, the, the statement was this that just like there's a machlekes regarding Tumah, there's also machlekes regarding Shabbos. And then the confusing part was, but not regarding chalitza. Now we're going to adjust that. We're going to say, and so too regarding chalitza. The same thing applies to chalitza. That it's not considered a shoe. It's not considered a shoe for tuma. One strap is broken. It's not considered a shoe for Shabbos. It's mukta. And it's not, good, uh, it's not a shoe for chalitza. When do you say that you can put a left shoe on the right foot and do chalitza and it's still kosher? That's hecha de la manu. That's only if it would have been a shoe for a regular shoe, for tuma and for Shabbos, and that it's actually a usable shoe. Aval hacha. Lemilse lav manu. But over here, it's not a real shoe. You can see it becomes tar. Rashi mentions maybe we could have done this the other way also if once we're adjusting it. Okay. Um, what was our point of all of this? This is all Rabbi Yosef explaining why he told Abaya that he has to leave the shoe, he can't move it. Because one, one uh, strap broke. He's telling him, look, Rabbi Yechanan gives a statement on which opinion, on Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Rabbi Yehuda holds one strap breaks is not a vessel anymore. And Rabbi Yechanan clearly says, it's, if it's a, a machlekes, if, the, if that's the opinion regarding Tumma, that's the same opinion regarding Shabbos. And it must be that the fact that Rabbi Yechanan is referring to Rabbi Yehuda, that means that the, that the Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda. Now, usually it's not like that. Usually the Rabbanan versus Rabbi Yehuda, it would be like the majority. 
Okay, so we, but that would be the exp explanation so far for Rabbi Yosef's opinion. We said this was in a chatzar and all of that. There wasn't a place where it was going to get lost. Karma, there wasn't a karma. Umiyam Rabbi Yechanan Hachi, did Rabbi Yechanan really say that the Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda, that one strap? We have a statement all over Shas. Rabbi Yechanan's view is that if there's a Stam Mishnah, an anonymous opinion in a Mishnah, the halacha goes like the anonymous, uh, anonymous opinion. He's explaining how Rebbe set up the Mishnayas, that that's what Rebbe intended by not putting a name there, that that should be the halacha. Just like in Shulchan Arach. Shulchan Arach, when you learn the Shulchan Arach, there's opinions in the Shulchan Arach, you think you're going to have clarity. He starts reading, it says, but some say, <laughs> so how is the halacha? So the rule is, stam v'yesh halacha kastam. That if there's a, an anonymous opinion that begins the halacha and then there's a yeshaimrim, you don't you don't have to follow the yeshaimrim. You can if there's a hefsid meru, but there's a whole discussion about how that works. But um, but the halacha goes like the stam. So the halacha should be like a stam mishnah. Well, where's the stam mishnah? Utenan, we have a stam mishnah. Sandal shenivska achas miyazna v'tikna. The sandal that one of the, the handles on the back of it broke. And he fixed it. It's still tummy medris. Tummy medris because a, a zav stepped on it. So it becomes tummy. It didn't become tar just because it broke. Nifsa kashnia. I'm reading the parentheses here. If the second one broke, vitikna, and you fix that, tar tummy medris. It's tar from being medris. Aval tummy maga medris, but it still has a tumma of maga medris. That means that although it's not, um, it's not a, it doesn't have the original tumma, but it can have a, a new tumma. That's the way it's explained. Okay. If it's, it, it could get a new tumma. My love, is it not? Leishna pnimis leishna chitainis. Doesn't matter which strap broke. Wow. Inside strap, the outside strap, the thing is still tummy, still a vessel. According to Rabbi Yehuda, if the outside strap broke, it becomes tar. Rabbi Yechanan says, Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda. But I have a Stam Mishnah that says, if the strap breaks, it's, it's still tummy. And, and it's a Stam Mishnah. And this should be the halacha, because Rabbi Yechanan says, Allah is like a Stam Mishnah. The Gemara answers, it says, like Pnimi Stavka. One strap broke. It didn't tell me which strap. You know which strap broke and why is it still tummy? It was because it was the inside strap, the one that doesn't matter so much. That's why it's still tummy. That's how we resolve this. Aval chitzayna, my, but if the outer one broke, then it's tar. Okay, we've resolved the, the, the problem. Rabbi Yechanan holds, like Rabbi Yehuda, and if the outer one, one breaks, it's tar. Mer says, no, you can't get away with that. Why? There's a certain type of logic that the Gemara does. It's called, it's like a lift like velisne bedida. It goes like this, that when I have two cases in the Mishnah, one case is Tame, one case is Tar, or whatever it is. One is Chai, one's Pate. I have two cases. Now, I could take two cases, one extreme. This one is, um, let's use uh, exactly our case. Here, we have a shoe. If one strap breaks, then it's still Tame. It's still considered a shoe. And now we just explained that which strap are we referring to? The inside strap, but the outside strap would not. Then the Mishnah says a second case. What's the second case? If two straps break, then it's going to be Tahar. So the problem with that logic is, with saying that, is lift like velisni bedida. If I had a case where one strap breaks is also Tahar, so why did you have to tell me a case of Tummy. I thought Lifluk Velocity Bedida is only in Avidinish. Yeah, it's because used it's in Avidinish. That's right, Yossi. This is what I, this is what I'm explaining. That in Avidinish, we we use that logic because over there we had uh, I forget the Shalchayad Prat Lishliach Bezdin, right? We, over there we, right. we 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 go like this. We say um, we say. If I have two cases, of one case which would be chayev and one case which would be pater, why do you have to take the case of pater from some other 
case, I have both of those cases right in right. the first case. Yeah. So over here, it works that... Also, oh, you're kind of like extending it. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm, ex I'm explaining how this logic works in, in other... Mm -hmm. So uh, over here, I have a case of Tame if one strap broke, and I have a case of Tar where one strap broke. Depends the inside or the outside. Over uh -huh. there, Yossi and that Gemara, we said that um, the woman, she doesn't have a way of saving her husband. So over there, we said that, why do you have to say that if a shliach bestin does something, right. he's going to be putter? The woman herself, if she had no other way, this is, no, she does have another way, doesn't. It's the same uh, uh, way of critiquing a, a Mishnah. So here, let's go through it inside. It goes like this. If so, if that's what you're going to say, that there's a difference between the inside and the outside, if so, that means in place of saying, the second case, that if the other strap breaks, then it's going to be tar, I think you have to add in the all of it says, you could divide this case in half itself, and it could, you read it as follows, and when do we say, that the shoe is still tame. That's nifska panimis. That's if the inside strap broke. Avol tar. But if the outside strap breaks, it's tar. We could have said that. If you're looking for a case of tummy and tar, all in the same case. So I'm Rav Yitzchok ben Yosef. Teimish nasena besandal sheish la'aba as nayim arba tar sheish le'la shaber dvar of shal Rabbi Yechanan. This is his answer. A very interesting answer. You thought that we're talking about two straps are breaking, one in the inside of the shoe, one in the outside of the shoe. And then you ask the question, so why do you need two straps to break to be tar, even if one strap broke, but if it's on the outside of the shoe? So Rabbi Yitzchak ben Yosef says, we're talking about that this shoe has four straps, two on the inside, two on the outside. We said that it's still tame. We're talking about the outside. We're talking about that one strap broke, it's still tame. Two straps break, not on the inside. Two straps on the outside becomes tar. Okay, resolve the problem. Kiyasa Ravin, Amar Rav Chanan Bar Abba, Amar Rav, Halachik Rabbi Yehud. Ravin came, Ravin was a traveler. He says, Halachas Rek to Rabbi Yehud, one strap breaks, it becomes Mokta, it becomes Tame, uh, it becomes Tar, rather. Rabbi Yechanan Amar, Ein Halachik Rabbi Yehud. Rabbi Yechanan says, Halach is not like Rabbi Yehud. This is a huge issue. We just, like, resolved. Uh, that the Allah is like uh, Rabbi Yechon holds Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda, we, and we even had a problem with another, and we explained it. Umar says, Miyam Rabbi Yechon and Hachi, does Rabbi Yechon say that? But me the Matar, Rabbi Yechon and Ali, but Rabbi Yehuda, Shmami not Rabbi Yehuda, Shreel, Rabbi Yechon and holds like Rabbi Yehuda. He just went through this whole process. And then all of a sudden, um, uh, who is this? It's, it's just Rabbi Yechon. Rabbi Yechon says, Allah Rabbi Yehuda. Umar says, I'm a Rainian of Ali, but Rabbi Yechon. There's different teachings, different students that were there. They heard different things from Rabbi Yechanan. Okay. Tanan Hasam. We have a Mishnah. This, this, this Mishnah is quoted often. We've had this. Kol klei balabatim shirin kerimainim. Any homeowner's utensil, if it breaks, it becomes tar. If the, if the, if the, uh, it's broken to the extent that pomegranates can fall out through the holes in the bottom. That's considered that it's, there's no use for this vessel anymore. And we had other things with olives and whatever. We, we explained it. Boy Chizkia. I don't know if it's Chizkia, Rabbi Chizkia. How does this go? Boy Chizkia. Nikiv Kamaiti Zayas. Let's say there was a hole the size of an olive. Still uh, considered a vessel in this instant. The Sasmai, so you, you fixed it up. And then it got another hole. So you patch that up. Until to the extent that altogether those holes that now have patches on them are the size of a pomegranate. So this should not be a vessel anymore. But, or maybe we say that no, each little bit got patched up, it still works. This is how it works with cars. <laughs> You have an old car. It's at the end of uh, you know 15 years. You basically have a new car. It's all the new parts. You have to replace everything. So um, anyway, is that considered uh, 
that, the, that there's a hole uh, over here in this case, there's a hole and a patch, a hole and a patch. Is it one big hole? Or do we say no? We say it's all considered a vessel. Amalei Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan says, Rabbi, Shani Slano Chizkiah, maybe one of the sons of Rabbi. I think Chizkiah was a son of Rabbi. No, Chizkiah was a son of Rabbi. Rabbi Yechanan says, Rabbi Shani Slano Sandal Shinifska Chas Miyaz Levitikna Stami Medjus. We have a Mishnah. You taught this to us. If a sandal has one strap that breaks, it's still tame. Nifska shnia vitikna tar milatame tar tar mina medjus, avatam maga medjus. But if the second one breaks, we say that it becomes tar. Vamrina lach maishna rishaina, da kaima, da kaima shnia, shnia nami, miskina rishaina. We asked you, one second, when the first strap broke, why was it tar? Why was it still tame? Because the other strap was there. When the second strap broke, why did it become tahar? Because the, the problem, why did it become tahar? The first strap was fixed already. It said over there, Vitikna, that you fixed it. So, the Amritlan, Rebbe, uh, I don't know if it's Rebbe or Rebbe. What is this, Rebbe? It is Rebbe. Vamritla uh, Nalea. And maybe he's talking directly to Chizkia. Panim Chadashis Paulakan. You told us that so what that you fixed it. You have a brand new shoe. You fixed the first one and now you fix the second one. It's not the same shoe anymore. All right? So Hachnami Panim Chadashis Paulakan. So therefore, if that's the case, and when I have this utensil, that is a patch and another patch and another patch. You add the patches together, it's the size of a pomegranate. So it's a panam chadashis balakan. Panam chadashis means there's a brand new face here. This is a brand new vessel. This is a brand new shoe. So that's his answer, which means that if it's going to become tar. You have a new vessel that's not the same old vessel that was tummy. So he responded about him, about Rabbi Yechanan's response. He say he calls him, less Dane Barinish. This is not a human being. This is an angel. I like that answer so much. Ikadamri, others say, Kagain Dane Barinish. This such a person is a human being. This is a real mensch. It's like the highest, the highest type of person. Uh, what did they say, that joke with the, the town hired as a rabbi? It's an old community that says, talks about him. They said, uh, he's a malach. Anyway, it turns out he wasn't such a great guy. They said, what did you mean? He said, well, a malach is nishkin mensch, erez eichet nishta mensch. <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, here they have two approaches to this. Either he's not a mensch because he is a malach, or they meant he's a mensch, that means he's the greatest uh, Amar Abzeira, Amar Rabba Bar Zimayna, Imri Shaina B'nei Malach Amanu B'nei Anashim. Bar Zimayna. It says, if the earlier generations are, are angels, I don't know if B'nei Malach means sons of angels or means angels, uh, then we are just humans. Imri Shaina B'nei Anashim, if the early sages, if the early people were humans, Anu Kechamayim, then we're, like, we're donkeys. Some switch it to Rabbi Yisid min the Eucharist. Veshel Rapinchas Ben Yar. Those were special donkeys. We're not like those donkeys. Ella Kesharchem were just like regular donkeys. One was a story in different sources of who the, who it was attributed to, but uh, it got stolen. Um, either Rabbi Chinin Ben Daisa, and when the robbers tried to feed it, it wouldn't eat. Other one is an animal that got sold. Is and um, the new owner didn't take miser, and the animal wouldn't eat. And uh, they, each one they would they gave the animal back, and um, but the one that got sold, or Pinchas Pinyars got sold, he, he asked the person, "Did you take miser?" They said, "No." He said, "Yeah, well, it's not going to eat until you take miser." Okay, now it says, 
go back to those original questions we asked, that these things are not considered knots. You're opening up the flask of wine and oil, it's not a knot, because you always open it up. It's not a permanent knot. It's pshita, of course it's not. You have to put things in, you take out. This is what's in the kitchen, this is what you're doing all day. This is tricha disli tartiuni. Maybe over here, it has two uh, is like a handle, two openings. Say that maybe only one of them is used. No, that sometimes they open it up the other side. You know, on the spices, there's two sides. One is for the fine and one is the other one. So, um, so sometimes you never open up one of them. Anyway, over here we're saying, no, you, sometimes, you, you, you do open it up. What about the path of me? It gets tied up on the top. But, uh, so obviously you have to open it up, you put the food in. So you take it out. It says, no, there's a flap over there that you can use. It's a second type of opening. You could say, maybe you never untie it. You just use the flap. That it gets untied as well. Rabbi Lezer ben Yaakov says that you're allowed to tie the rope that goes along to hold an animal in. It's pshita, that's obvious. Leitzricha dis leitarti yisri. Say that there are two ropes, one higher than the other. Or maybe what it means is that there's two knots, one on each side. But we're on top of Kufsid Gimel. Could say that maybe one of them never gets untied because you only have to untie one of them. Kamash Milan, that no, gets untied as well. I'm Rav Yosef, I'm Rav Yudah, Mishmal Allah, Krablos of Yaakov. Rav Yosef says, in the name of Rav Yehuda, in the name of Shmuel, that Allah is like Krablos of Yaakov. Now, it's interesting. The Allah is always like Krablos of Yaakov. But here he's saying, um, Allah is like Krablos of Yaakov. So, I'm going to Allah is like Krablos of no one spoke about that. Rabbi Elizabeth ben Yaakov just added in another case that uh, no one said that, it's, that that's prohibited. Rabbi Elizabeth ben Yaakov said that that's okay. You're allowed to tie up a rope in front of an animal. So Amalei, my nafkaloch, you know, Abaya asked Rabbi Yosef that no one argues on that. Why are you saying that Allah is like him? Of course, there's no one, there's no discussion about that. So, so Rabbi Yosef responds, my nafkaloch, you know, what's the difference if someone argues? Just that's the halacha. Amalei, Gemara, Gemara, Zemaraisate. When you teach a, a teaching, is that a, just a song that you can't examine it and see what, what do you really mean there? Okay.